I've been saying for a while that I've wanted to do a hunt with a specific loadout of single shot weapons only, and that is still not feasible. There is no class 1 single shot weapon, but I realized what we could do is a break action weapons only, and that kind of allows us to use a couple more things. So our loadout today consists of the 470, that is going to be for planes devices specifically, the 7mm Empress, that's probably going to be our main weapon, and we can use a bunch of different shotguns. I went with the Scarlet 20 gauge break action side by side, and that's going to allow us to shoot the turkeys here. So I think this is going to be fun. It's kind of the closest thing I could get to what I wanted to do. And we'll kind of see. I've really been enjoying Silver Edge Peak, so I thought we'd come here. Now the distance here was not exactly a part of the plan. I had that max weight mountain lion track, and I thought it must have been over in here, but I just was not seeing it. 400 meters away. I think that actually could be kind of fun to mess around with some longer shots with loadouts like this. I definitely do not know the correct kind of height to hold, but looks like we got a good lung hit with the 7 mil. That's one of the things that it always has been really good at. Flat shooting and fairly intuitive bullet drops. So I hope that shot actually was over uh, 400 meters. A lot of times, especially at ranges like that, you can end up ranging through the animal. Sometimes the hitbox is kind of hard to get the reticle on exactly. But I mean, it was well over 400 when it was showing, so I would assume that it actually was beyond that mark. And while we're here, we've got a, I think, gray standing over there as well. Just a female, but we might as well take that since we're moving over this way. As for our level seven, for one, it looks like a high bleed rate, which definitely is not too bad at that range. 411 meters, double lung a little bit lower, and that might have dropped right into the heart. That's a pretty cool way to start out. Like I said, I really had no intention of trying to go for crazy long shots or anything like that, but at least with the 7 mil portion, that might be something we maybe try to do. Maybe we'll intentionally try to position ourselves farther away. As for the 470 and shotgun, it's not really as viable, but it might be fun to switch it up in that way. But then we had our bonus gray mountain lion as well, 33 score right on the dot. We did make that hard shot a little easier at 160 meters though. Well, go figure. We've got a level three gobbler out here and we saw this work decently well on Mississippi probably a week ago where we were able to call one into shotgun range. It's been a while, normally we end up shooting him with the 22, but there's some cover up here in front of us Hopefully we can just kind of get them in range and take them with the 20 gauge. For whatever reason, they just do not want to leave that feed zone. So I guess we'll try to get up here into this bit of cover. I know that the one that we shot on Mississippi was at least 50 meters away. Now it was with the 12 gauge, but it did a pretty good job in taking it down quite quickly. So I would like to think that the 20 gauge could do the same. Kind of tough to see them from here. actually. I don't know whether they are alert just because of our movement or if they were coming in, but let's just hit that guy. We'll actually even hit him twice just to ensure that he's going to go down. We might be able to get a bonus one here. That was a strange decision to just land there, but we won't go too overboard with the hunting pressure. I'm not sure if that actually was the reason, but we had a Hirschfeld in multiplayer game not that long ago where we shot uh, three European bison in one spot and consequently got kicked right after that. So do not want that to happen here. Just kind of an average size diamond turkey, 4.6 with a 10.37 kg weight. Hit him with a total of 49 pellets there from the 20 gauge steel bird shot. So probably one shot would have been fine, but you never know. It could have been a less ideal shot. And I assume they're like geese where they can kind of get away when something like that happens, random black bear coming through as well. We might as well try to get it. Shot was probably a little bit back, but I think even intestines with the 7 mil should bring that down. Hit it one more time to kind of help that out. And with our little bonus black bear as well on top of everything, more so than the fact that we got a diamond out of that, I'm mostly thrilled that we got to get some use out of the 20 gauge. This is one of those hunts, despite the fact that it is kind of focused on the unique loadout. The fact that the 20 gauge and 470 are very limited in the species they can take, I know we're not going to get to fire them a bunch, so getting a couple of turkeys there with the 20 gauge actually kind of, you know, made my hunt already. Not that I really think it's going to happen, but something that would be nice, especially for hunts such as this, 
would be a weapon that's maybe class 8 to 9. So obviously the 470 is class 9 only, and we have things like the 300 and 338 that are classes 7 to 9, but uh, I don't know, I think maybe not for the 470, but some of those other calibers that would be used to hunt some of the larger game in Africa, for instance, I think a class 8 to 9 weapon would be pretty cool. And I don't know, it would, it would open up a lot of use on other maps, whether it's elk and moose or, you know, other species that reach in that class 8 area. I think it could work, but for now, obviously a hard shot with the 7 mil does well enough for this guy. Well, still not a class 9 animal to use the 470 on, but a max weight estimate black bear is something we can try to take out with the 7 mil. I can't tell what fur type, and of course he's going to go right into the reeds there. So it may take a moment. It looks like he's still kind of going. It is their drink time. So I'm going to assume he'll stop. I just want to kind of keep an eye on where he's at. If we can get a shot while he's walking with him highlighted, we'll take it. I think that'll do. And I just saw another one coming out behind him there. That's just a three female. So I think we'll go and take a look then. One thing that he is definitely not is a rare fur type. Definitely one of the commons. He is in fact a dark, a 21.1. See, it is the darks that kind of have like a little bit of that brown or cinnamon look to them that, I don't know, it, it kind of goes back to what I talked about in yesterday's video with the female lions. When it's a little bit of different lighting or, or through some brush, it could be really easy to mistake a rare for a common or, or vice versa. And in those cases, I'd rather just take the shot and go and find out. Not that you'd ever know that you missed out on a rare if you do in fact miss out on one, but the idea of just walking right past one because I don't want to go and shoot it and take the 30 seconds to go and claim it is uh, not something I really want to do. What on earth is happening? Why, why are these turkeys standing like this? It looks like the duck glitch that you get on the maps with the ducks where they're kind of like hovering over the water attempting to land. I mean, okay. So, what we have to do, definitely, is shoot one from a distance, because I don't want to get so close to the, that it stops doing that. I just want that for the harvest screen so we can look at it. Oh, it didn't even die. Okay, so my guess, probably, is that we lost connection to the server or something, but it hasn't kicked us out yet, so we're not going to get to uh, find out, but maybe we can run over there and see them? I mean, that's just strange. It's even... It adds to it. Their heads are moving? I don't know. I've never seen that. My only guess is at the time or something that we disconnected from the server that maybe they were all just about to spawn in and they were flying. I don't know what this is, but uh, we'll get a goofy screenshot of Sir 12 next to a very strange looking turkey and um, yeah, I'll take that as a, a sign that we gotta switch servers. I think this is probably as good as we're gonna do as far as getting a shot at a bison with the 470. I'm not sure if they feed right now. I can see his feed zone tracks, but he is heading in another direction. So before he turns or anything, we'll get that shot in there. Looks like he is starting to drop. And by the way, it is the lack of a scope that keeps me from using the 470 very often. I do like the gun, but whether it is a shot at that range or a shot much farther, a lot of times a scope is just kind of required for some of those shots. It worked out in this case as we are having more turkeys just fly right to us today. But uh, 114 silver double on him there at 92. And you know, he didn't go down that fast. That kind of again goes back to my point. The 300 can take one down about as quickly. And you have that scope to be able to take a longer shot, or a more precise shot even at that range. Probably more dropping in, in everything as we're heading over here, but I don't know, it is still fun to switch it up, and I know we've shot a couple of diamonds with the 470 in the past, but it's something, when those opportunities come up, it's a little less sure, I guess, that the shot is going to land where you want it, or that you're going to be able to get an ideal shot opportunity, so that makes it more, more fun when it actually works out. That is not a bad looking mule deer buck. Not quite the diamond rack. I think that's the one that scores like around 280 or 290. 
always been one of my favorites, and you know, this is the case with a bunch of different animals, from red deer to mule deer, and I know there are other ones that are uh, not coming to mind right now, but some of the big gold racks, I just wish could be diamond racks. There are some incredible looking deer and other species in this game that unfortunately, you know, just kind of get gold at best. This guy, though, is determined to run by. I don't know if that's going to be a vital hit. He's going to try to get us at this rate. I wanted to get a hip shot off, but couldn't quite get the gun reloaded in time. And now at this rate, we're just kind of saving time by hitting him. I probably should have went to the 470 there. That is the one thing I'm not sure if we'll end up getting another bison in this hunt. It would be nice to. I'm not sure like why I struggle so much to find plains bison unless it is their drink time. I rarely end up finding them, and it's not the first time that we've had this happen on Silver Ridge Peaks. In fact, it's not the first time that we've had it happen with the 470. The last time that we had it, and I'm not sure what the specific reasoning was, we had the same thing. I'm pretty sure we shot one bison towards the end after struggling to find one. There is a nice mountain goat down there, too. We could kind of go back to the original plan. Quite honestly, the, the turkey showed up and I kind of forgot <laughs> that we were doing, or at least trying to do, some of the longer shots. So we can try to push this to beyond 400. Hopefully no mountain lions go down there, because I know the mule deer that we shot was alert due to some mountain lions in the area. So as long as he kind of hangs around, we can attempt another long shot. Kind of right up by the spine. It looks like that's going to go right through the lungs. Pretty good 2 for 2 on a 400 meter shot today, as long as that was in fact over 400 and the rangefinder wasn't lying to us. But as for our buck, he is a 284, and yeah, this is the rack that I thought it was, and it's kind of the case with a couple of mule deer racks. Every time I think of a trophy mule deer, I always think of these kind of kickers off of the, I never know what to call them, I guess just we'll call them the forks, because I'm not sure what G2 or how any of that works with mule deer because of the forks, but I just think... I don't know, that is, in my mind, what Trophy Mule Deer always end up looking like. So I wish this could be a diamond rack, but maybe a gold rare or something like that could be a thing we could find one day. I'd love to have one looking like that in the Trophy Lodge. So finally, after a very long run around to go and get this guy, I don't know why I went that way and not the shorter way. I guess it was because of where the Mule Deer was laying. It was a 406 meter left lung shot. Again, we were very, very close to getting a hard shot. I'm not so sure. Maybe a perfectly placed shot could have got just the outside of like the, the part of the heart that's the furthest out towards the hide, I guess. Would have been tough, but still not too bad. Two 400 meter lung shots today. And there is another goat. Just a level three. I guess we'll just kind of get that guy before we head back to the trophy lodge. He's just standing there. That is our shot, I do believe. Always a good way to wrap up a video with one of those insta drops, double lung and hard in fact. Not quite as bad at 200 meters as at 400. I guess that does show the difference of the bullet energy, or the kinetic energy I guess of the bullet, going over that much distance. It does actually lose some power, which is kind of neat. But anyway, we'll go back to our second lodge to place the gobbler. If there is a type of platform in this lodge that is lacking, it's these smaller ones here which are perfect for turkeys and stuff like that. Are these not... I guess you can't flip these. You can flip some of them. I thought... unless I'm on the wrong... there we go. I thought it might be better to face it this way because normally we come through the hallway uh, in this direction, so that'll work a little bit better. Like I said at the time, just a 4.6, kind of the expected size for a level 3 diamond, but always nice to get something cool when we go out on these loadout specific hunts, and I'm not sure what it is. I've really enjoyed Silver Ridge Peaks lately, and definitely having gotten a turkey again in one of these videos with a shotgun. With turkey season coming up soon, it's going to be less than two weeks away by the time this video comes out. We're definitely going to have to do, probably on Mississippi since it's the Easterns, a turkey specific hunt. Just going after them with shotguns and calls and seeing how we can do. But anyway, that will be for a future hunt. And that is going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.